it's it's good to kind of you know be back here uh, in in China for for KubeCon. Um, it's been a bit of a, a sentimental sentimental you know year for us uh, in kind of the CNCF and Cloud Native community. You know we've obviously had you know the 10 year uh, anniversary of Kubernetes that's been going on, but um, you know, I've, you know, personally been coming to China, I think, for about 20 years on a variety of different trips on kind of uh, earlier in my open source uh, career. And it's kind of always been fun working uh, with the community uh, here, even when it could be a little bit uh, challenging with, uh, you know, time zones and, and, and languages. But um, it was six years ago since we did our first KubeCon uh, in, in China. And, you know, it was a very kind of memorable, ex you know, experience for me. And I'm very happy that we've been able to kind of bring this back and, and you know, evolve this uh, in a variety of different cities uh, across China. As I mentioned, um, it's been a, a year, a very sentimental year for kind of the CNCF community. Um, you know, we've had this uh, 10 years of Kubernetes since Kubernetes was first uh, released, you know, to the world, which is usually, uh, if you kind of think in open source years, 10 years is quite a bit of time, but, um, you know, the impact that Kubernetes has had in that short time has been quite uh, remarkable. Uh, our friends uh, on, on the Linux kernel, I think I saw Greg somewhere uh, today this morning, I think celebrated 33 uh, years or something. So, you know, it's a long, a long time, but Kubernetes is still, still kind of a, a bit of a, you know, teenager, uh, you know, compared to some of our larger peer projects. But, you know, this year is all about kind of celebrating the community, celebrating the work that has kind of happened over the last decade. In particular, you know, we are very interested in hearing the impact that Kubernetes has had in the Chinese community out here and different kind of end users and vendors. So we have this, um, you know, lovely little survey that hopefully will take no more than five minutes for you to fill out, but we would love to learn, you know, use cases, what cool things are you doing? How has Kubernetes changed your life and company? So uh, would love to have this, uh, you know, shared with us so we can kind of learn, uh, learn from you. So, uh, you know, continuing on, you know, we've been working with, um, you know, uh, the Chinese community quite a bit and uh, numbers always fun. And if you kind of look when, um, you know, KubeCon, you know, first <laughs> kind of appeared uh, here about six years ago uh, in, in 2018, uh, the ecosystem was kind of very, you know, very different, right? It was, you know, still very, very kind of dominated by the early uh, progenitors of, uh, you know, you know, CNCF, which is kind of more North American bias. And over the years, we've kind of had grown to basically diversify this community where contributions now are a little bit more, you know, diverse than they were uh, in, the, you know, in the early days. And if you kind of look at contributions from the China market, you know, you know, overall, uh, you come up as number two uh, of uh, kind of overall contributor to across all CNCF, uh, you know, projects. And that makes up for roughly close to 10% of the overall uh, contributions, which to me is, is very cool. And I think for an open source community, it's, it's, it's healthy when you kind of see this diversification happening. So, you know, in the next hopefully handful of years, five years, 10 years, I hope this kind of trend continues and we kind of get, get more global, uh, you know, participation. The other kind of interesting factoid is, um, you know, we're almost at 200 projects in CNCF and a little over 40 of those are actually um, what I would call, you know, ch you know, China native, China born uh, projects, which have kind of come to the ecosystem, which has been kind of cool to see us, uh, you know, pick up uh, projects from a variety of different parts uh, of the world. So, you know, some of these examples, um, you know, some of the bigger ones in our community, we've had, you know, Cube Edge, you know, TyKV, Dragonfly Harbor, obviously are uh, a little bit further along the maturity curve, but we have a lot of projects in the sandbox uh, also that come from China, which is, which is quite cool. And, you know, what's been kind of interesting, uh, you know, from my kind of, you know, observation, um, you know, we've had a lot of people over the years that we've worked with to kind of uh, build relationship here. And we had folks like, you know, uh, and, and, and Annie Lai, I, I saw Bill earlier, but, you know, what's really been cool is coming to KubeCon here and seeing like, holy crap, you know, people put Kubernetes on like, you know, satellites or, you know, uh, using it for genome things. So like the, 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 the use cases and kind of the interesting things that happen here based on kind of the scale of the country is fun. And I'm happy that we're all able to kind of work together to kind of, you know, uh, do this. And, you know, the whole point of open source is knowledge sharing, collaborating and improving this common good available, uh, you know, for all. So uh, definitely thank you for folks that have been supporting us since the early days to kind of truly ensure that uh, we, we support the community here. So uh, before I kind of, um, 
you know, uh, finish kind of opening remarks, like, you know, something that's kind of happened is if you kind of look back, uh, you know, to, to this little uh, diagram, you know, back in the early days of CNCF, we didn't have that many projects, right? You know, we really started with Kubernetes, we had a Prometheus and, you know, Envoy, Linkerd, and, you know, it was kind of a very, very small set. And if you look at the original kind of uh, how CNCF started, we had this wonderful little uh, architecture diagram in 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 the in, in this in the in the charter, right? And if you kind of look at this, um, uh, you know, the idea was, you know, what only the things in uh, blue um, that you see. Sorry if you're a, a little little colorblind, but <laughs> the blue things, uh, you know, those are the things that we wanted to really, you know, be in in CNCF. The dark blue things, right? The other things, we're, we we weren't sure, right? And so what, what has happened over time is, you know, we've evolved with the community and what all y'all have wanted to do. So, you know, obviously now, you know, CNCF, the container runtime is in, you know, green, different color, right? We never envisioned hosting container runtimes, but yet we now have container D, Rocket, Creo. We've never really imagined hosting SDN service mesh technology, right? And we have service mesh technology now. And so, um, you know, we have this kind of joke within the CNCF Tactical Operating Committee that we've kind of um, started to, like, accept a little bit more of uh, almost, uh, you know, everything that kind of comprises modern, you know, open source uh, infrastructure and uh, application development. Because at the end of the day, you know, you're going to need a registry, you're going to need a service mesh, you're going to need a way to store things, you're going to need a way to do observability, right? And so what, what's really happened is we've kind of evolved with the community to work with everyone's concerns because you know I think at the end of the day if if open source communities out there don't work with what end users want to do what people want to evolve with the technology you kind of become stagnant right and you know I think what's something that I'm really proud of of you know the cloud native community across the world is just like cloud native principles you have things that you know we're we're distributed we're resilient uh, we've also been very resilient in how we've kind of evolved our overall architecture with projects that we support so with nearly 200 projects in CNCF we kind of cover all different aspects and we'll kind of continue to uh, you know evolve this uh, that's kind of one of one of the cool things about cloud to kind of, um, you know, really thank uh, some of the folks that have been working with us over the years, you know, we have a great set of, uh, you know, ambassadors. I've met, you know, some of you uh, over the last uh, couple of days, but I, you know, I'm not going to individually thank, you know, everyone, you know, here, but, you know, I, I, ran, I ran into Fog, Miley, Jimmy, there's so many great folks that have kind of spent time building the community here, and uh, I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of, you know, the work uh, all y'all have, uh, you know, done in making Cloud Native uh, successful here. So very, uh, you you know, a personal thank you for, for me and, and the CNCF, uh, you know, staff and, and leadership team. The other kind of cool things we have been doing is we've been investing a lot in cloud native education. Um, some of the biggest complaints we get now from folks are like, hey, we, we get Kubernetes, we're good. We have that deployed, but we're, we're now deploying Argo, you know, backstage, other things. And so we've been investing a lot in producing more training and certifications across the kind of the wider uh, cloud native ecosystem, generally what I would call like day two aspects of, of cloud native development. And the other thing that we've been doing is investing in kind of having these education ambassadors. These are folks that have, you know, passed, uh, you know, a certain amount of certifications and, um, you know, are really exemplifying what uh, a, a true kind of cloud native uh, educated and certified person is. So our first, uh, you know, what we call Cubestronaut, uh, which is someone that's passed all of our certification uh, in China was uh, Jinglong Wang. So I don't think he's here, but I just wanted to call him out as being the first one. And, uh, you know, for, uh, for folks that are interested in hiring talent, we have a website you could go to and kind of see this. Like, if you need experienced engineers or people that really know Kubernetes, this is a great list of folks to potentially hire. I've had so many meetings here over the last couple days of companies that are like, oh, how can we go hire specific talent, right? So this is a great kind of list uh, that you'd go for. And also, if you're looking to personally up-level your career and make yourself noticeable for job prospects, this is a great program that uh, you should participate in. Um, 
let's go see if this works. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, I've uh, spent, uh, you know, it's been to China, you know, quite a few times in the last uh, year, and we've had a fantastic community here. Uh, we've obviously had the 10-year Kubernetes party, and we've had a variety of those there. We have a variety of KCDs uh, throughout there, and so, you know, we're, we're only really going to have one KubeCon in China that we do a year, but we have a huge community of uh, meetup groups on community.cncf.io and KCDs that happen. So I really encourage uh, all y'all to go to community.cncf.io and find ways to engage in the, in, 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 in the community. Finally, um, you know, something that's like personally, uh, you know, very much important, uh, you know, to me and at the Linux Foundation, you know, we truly consider open source collaboration uh, a global endeavor. Like our communities are all over the world. You know, Jim had his uh, keynote yesterday where he kind of talked a little bit about the breadth of what the Linux Foundation does. We do a ton of things, but the key kind of thing in our heart is like open source is global and we need to be in different places meeting with our community and supporting them. So for KubeCon, like we're here in, you know, Hong Kong today for KubeCon, you know, China, but in November, we're gonna do KubeCon in North America. And then our community in India has, uh, uh, I don't want to say complained is not the right word, has, uh, has pestered us to finally do something in India. So we're doing the first KubeCon in India later this year, December. So, um, you know, it, it, we're truly doing our best to work with all our different kind of global stakeholders to really support and have them uh, there. And hopefully you're able to join some of these uh, uh, events that we have uh, in the future. So uh, I don't want to take too much time because uh, we have a, a wonderful program today. But, you know, at the end of the day, I want to thank basically uh, everyone that has worked uh, with us over the years and kind of, you know, contributing to our projects, whether it's uh, code contributions, contributing a project from their company, organizing, you know, uh, an event, uh, helping with translations, uh, bugging me to make sure that our meetings are in China-friendly time zones. Like, this is all valu very valuable contributions, and, you know, I thank everyone for, uh, you know, uh, you know, helping us make this whole uh, community, you know, better. So. Uh, I really want you to network here, you know, learn something new. Uh, and if you ever kind of need to talk cloud native or CNCF uh, related things, find staff. Uh, I'm very available. That's my little, you know, little WeChat, uh, little, uh, oh, wait a minute. There's my little WeChat thing. And, you know, I'm very easy to find online. But uh, if you want to chat and need help, uh, I'm personally more than happy to take, uh, you know, some time and, and, and work with you. So thank you. Uh, enjoy the next. Uh, you know, a couple days uh, that remain at KubeCon um, China, and hopefully we'll see you at future uh, Kubernetes and uh, CNCF events. So thank you, and uh, I'll end up, uh, I think, introducing Miley is up next, so our, one of our program chairs. So thank you all.